So a while back I did a video on forces. In there I had a gravity simulation in Unity and a lot of you guys were asking for a tutorial. So in this video we'll have a look at how you can implement Newton's universal law of gravity in Unity. And of course if you want to know more about the theory behind it you can check out the other video. So let's get into it. So here's the basic scene with a camera, some light and a planet. I got the model of the asset store and the same thing for the skybox. I'll have a link for both in the description. Now currently on my planet I only have a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. Let's go ahead and add a sphere collider as well and we also add a new component this is going to be a custom script that will handle all of our gravitational code you could go ahead and call it planet or celestial body but gravity doesn't only work for planets gravity applies to all objects with a mass so let's instead just call it attractor let's choose c sharp and hit create an add and let's open it up in visual studio now first off we can go ahead and delete our two methods and let's instead create a method called attract this method is where the magic happens. Now attraction happens between two objects. So as an argument, let's take in another attractor, which is going to be the object that we want to attract. We can call this object to attract. Now according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, there's a few things that we need in order to calculate the gravitational force between two objects. The first one is the position of the two objects. We'll use this to get both the distance between them and the direction to apply a force in. But we'll also need the object's mass. Now we could of course go up here and define a mass on our own. And we could also use some more of Newton's laws to calculate how the objects would move after we apply forces to them. But Unity actually has a component built in for this sort of stuff already. So I don't see a reason to reinvent the wheel on this one. I'm of course talking about the rigid body component. Now what we need to do is just make sure that every attractor has a rigid body component. We'll call it RB and let's also make sure to mark it as public so that we can access it from another attractor. If we now just save this and go into Unity, we of course also need to add the component. So let's hit add component of type rigid body and let's drag it into the slot. On the rigid body component, we'll make sure to disable use gravity because we want to apply that on our own. And here we can adjust the mass. Now the mass for a planet like Earth is huge and that's despite Earth being fairly small. Luckily, however, we can define ourselves what unit we're using. So we could just say that a mass of one here equals six times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. If you're going for realism, just make sure to keep the proportions right. In our case here, let's just set the mass to something like a thousand. And of course, this will also totally depend on the scale of your scene. My planet is fairly big compared to the standard unity sphere. So that's why I'm kind of bumping up our mass. We can now go into Visual Studio and we can now access our mass. We can also access the rigid body of the object that we are trying to attract. Let's store that in a variable as well of type rigid body. Let's call it the RB to attract. And we can just set it equal to obj to attract dot RB. And now we are ready to do some math. First off, let's get the direction between the object that we are trying to attract to this object. We'll do that by taking our current position and subtracting the position of the other object. We can then store this in a vector 3 called direction. Now in order to get the distance between the two objects, all we need to do is make a float called distance and set it equal to our direction vector's magnitude. In other words, the length of our direction vector. Then we can calculate the magnitude of our force. Let's create a float called force magnitude. And this is where Newton's central equation comes in. We'll take the mass of the one object, rb.mass, multiply it with the mass of the other object, rb to attract dot mass and we'll then divide that by the distance between them squared. To square our distance we'll go math dot pow to take a number and lift it to a power. In our case we want to take the number distance and lift it to the power 2. And now we can create our final force vector. Let's create a vector 3 called force and set it equal to our direction vector dot normalized and then multiply it with our force magnitude. In other words, we'll apply a force in the direction of our object with a strength defined by Newton's equation. Then in order to apply that force, we'll go rb to attract dot add force and here we'll simply input a force vector. Now of course we aren't calling this method anywhere. So currently we will see nothing happening. To change that, let's go in and create a void fixed update method. Remember fixed update is called a fixed amount of times per second and we use it for all of our physics code. Here we want to find all of the other attractors in our scene. I'll show you how to optimize this in a second but for now we can just use find objects of type and we want to find all attractors. We can then create an attractors array called attractors 
and set it equal to the objects we found. We'll then create a for each statement where we'll loop through all of the attractor components and we'll call each one the attractor in our attractors array. And for each one of these attractors, we'll call attract where the object to attract is the attractor we're currently looking at. Let's now try and save this Go into Unity, select our planet, drag it into the project panel to create a prefab out of it. Let's then duplicate our planet by going Ctrl D, move it over, and let's do this a few times. And once you have a few different planets scattered around, let's try and hit play. Now of course, we'll get a bunch of errors. The reason why is a simple mistake in our logic. When we loop through all of the attractors we find, we're actually also looping over our current object. That means that each object is also trying to attract itself. And getting the direction from point A to point A and the distance between point A and point A doesn't make too much sense. So let's go in here and make sure that we check if the attractor we are looking at is not equal to this attractor, well then we'll go ahead and call attract. Let's now try again to hit play. And depending on the masses of your object, this might look really cool or as boring as mine is. If we look at the position, we can see the values are actually changing. It's just happening super slowly. If we select all of our planets and bump up the mass by putting say another zero here, then we can start to see something happening, especially if we do that once more. Luckily, we can easily control the scale of all gravitation using a simple constant. And this constant is actually already part of the equation. It's called the gravitational constant, or just capital G for short. Let's go ahead and create this in a variable. Let's make it a constant float. We'll call it capital G. And this is another one of those ridiculous numbers. This one is ridiculously small. We can play around with this in any way we want. Let's just take the base number here, 6.674, put that in here, and let's just move over the decimal place a few times here. And let's go down to where we calculate our force magnitude and make sure to multiply with G. We can now save that, go into Unity and hit play. And our gravitation should be happening at a much quicker rate. Awesome. There's really not much more to it. Using just the system we have now, we can start messing around with planets, masses, and adding other forces to say, make a planet orbit another. Let's just for fun take our second planet here and scale it up a bit. And let's just increase the mass here by a factor 10. If we now hit play, we should see that all the other planets would get drawn towards this one fairly quickly. Now, in case you want to have huge amounts of planets, I definitely recommend that you optimize it a little bit. A way to do this is to avoid searching for other attractors each fixed update call. Instead, let's go ahead and create a public static list of attractors. And we'll call this our attractors. Then whenever an object is enabled, so void on enabled, we want to register this object into the attractors list. So we'll simply go attractors dot add this. Of course, we also need to make sure to initialize the attractors array. So in here, we'll just add a small if statement saying if attractors is equal to null, then we'll set attractors equal to a new list of attractors. And then on disable, so void on disable, we'll go ahead and remove from the attractors list. So let's go attractors dot remove this. Then in the fixed update call, we can simply avoid this line altogether and simply loop through all of the attractors in our attractors list. And I got a bunch of errors here and that's because I misspelled on enable, we need to disable the D there. And now if we hit play, our scene is much more performant. One thing you will notice is that if you go ahead and duplicate an object, it will throw you a quick error. The reason for that is that when an object gets duplicated, you will have two objects at the exact same position. And again, our equation does not like that. So we'll simply go in here and say that if our distance is equal to zero, well then we simply want to return out of it. Now things are just a little bit safer and we should now be able to hit play, select an object and duplicate it with no problem. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to watch my video on forces. That should hopefully give you a more deep understanding of what's going on here. And from here, I just recommend you play around with it. There's lots of fun to be had with these kind of simulations. I find they often lead to cool game ideas. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in July and a special thanks to Hans Huff Cole Cabral, Will Goat, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Worley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Robert Bund, and Peter Lark. If your name's not on the list, I will make sure to include you in videos later this month and next month as well. Thanks a lot, guys.